This is GT Time. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. Yes. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. And in the super seat this week, Brad Ellis. Hey, everybody. And making everything happen in the booth, Ian Hink. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Brad, let's just get going. Sure. Our super seat question this week. What's your most recent big mistake? And what did you learn from it? So my recent big mistake was very recent. By recent, I mean today. Okay, wow. By underestimating LA traffic. <laughs> I usually leave around the same time. I'm like, I got the system worked out. Sure. I know where traffic slows down. Mm -hmm. I got it all figured out. Go on the freeway today, car accident. Delayed. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, dude, I got to just start leaving earlier now because i don't like being late i really hate being late Let, let's i like that there. about you brad is usually here before yep. anybody so else. what you learned is like i just have to leave my house earlier yeah that'll solve it it's simple as that Nah, i don't think so brad i think like honestly you just have to i think you learned the wrong lesson the lesson is like there's just going to be accidents someday don't listen to him don't listen to Kyle. Yeah, I'm not the one who was late all the time. But then yeah, you're gonna you're be you're gonna be super early other days. You're gonna lose. Sleep I would rather be early any day than late. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, you can also, you know, if if you're at least up early enough, you can always do the uh, the traffic maps. Yeah. I mean, I it's, that, unpre it's unpredictable. I do that pretty much every every day. But I mean, they're not gonna to predict that accident. Well, no, they're not gonna predict it. But if there is an accident before you leave. So why I like to do these kind of questions is like, hey, let's get to know the person in the super seat. And like, I feel like we just learned a lot about Brad today. I'm very into time management. He's into time management. Why do you think I like speed runs a lot? Oh, you're like maximizing your Efficiency. time. Efficiency. Yeah. This dude is on New Game Plus Plus and Bloodborne and I'm like in old Yarnum. So yeah. So why slow. didn't any of your time management skills rub oh. off on my Cuber? That's what I want to know. Can't You've known the guy, guy for so long. Okay. Can't control that Nothing guy. Do. All right. I'll accept it. Uh, let's uh, let's get into corrections. Let's do it. Uh, uh, today's first correction is about uh, something Andrea said last week. Uh, it was that uh, the Halo Nightfall was Steven Spielberg's project. Actually, no. So Steven, this is confusing to me. Steven Spielberg's project isn't coming out till autumn 2015. So we'll see that this year. Uh, uh, Ridley Scott is the one who. <laughs> Everyone was like Ridley Scott's series Halo Nightfall. Even like if you look at the, if you Google it and you just look at like headlines, it's like here's Ridley Scott's Halo Nightfall. He's a producer on it. Like Kyle Bosman's GT Time. Right. However, this would Ridley Scott is only credited as executive producer on the first episode of Halo Nightfall. Oh. And then he's gone. He's out of the credits. That happens constantly. What do you mean that Especially happens constantly? It's like scores and soundtracks, they'll get like a big name composer to write one theme. He might not even do the whole track for one song, but he'll do a theme, and then they'll get the other composers to come in and actually make the whole thing. And everyone's like, oh yeah, that guy did a really great job. It's like, that guy didn't write any of that music. Executive producer doesn't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. It really doesn't. Because, what? I mean, it, it could mean something amazing, but there's no guarantee that that person had anything to do. That person could have done something totally weird. That person could have ha uh, helped someone get cast in a role and then the deal was, I want to be executive producer on this, and then they'll yeah. get in the title. I think we should stop forever calling it Ridley Scott's Halo Nightfall. Like, you know, maybe, yeah, we, can, that. maybe we can call the pilot his at best, but, like, that's it, man. Well, we've got Steven Spielberg's Boom Blocks. Yes, that is Steven Spielberg's baby. Also, XYZ, coming soon. Um, so, uh, also, Muscle March does not include a panda in its character roster. It's a polar bear. I'm really glad we cleared that up. Yeah. That's, I don't want to. Big difference. It's a huge difference. Yeah. Did a panda send that in? <laughs> it could have been. That would have been great. <laughs> a panda was watching the show. I do think it has a pink bikini on, though. It does. It does that. In yeah. fact, have that. And there um, goes our, our screen. So, uh, also, many <laughs> viewers and listeners took umbrage <laughs> with Brandon's comments about and I, Halo. And legitimately, I did think about this. I think I was like walking my dog and just recalling events from the last week. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I could see. Because I was talking to somebody about Uncharted 4 and A Thief's End, and they were like, I, if the, the thief they're referencing isn't Nathan. It could be somebody else. This doesn't necessarily have to be the last Uncharted. So I was like, okay, they finished the fight. They, they're referencing another fight. It's, it's just this fight. But they don't say this fight. They say the fight. <laughs> Finish the fight. Meaning there are no other fights. It is the fight. So, <laughs> But they were just talking about the one thing. They were talking about the... Um, who are the big guys? Who are the overlords? The guys in the floating chairs? The, the Covenant? Little, the covenant? Not the Covenant, but the uh, the actual the guys. 
No, no there are like three guys in in chairs that float around that like rule the covenant. I think we can call them the elders. There, there's a very specific name I can't remember, oh. and they actually themselves have like Jarolhane and crazy. Actually, no, I think that's a different word, but like in the Halo universe, but they they each have specific names, and there's like a big battle in Halo Three where you take we like jump on one of them and take them out, and so um, it's the fight against those guys in the covenant. I was under the impression that was the end, also from that. I don't know why fight? you. Would, I don't know why you would think that. It's not the end of a trilogy or the end of the Halo on that console, or it, it just. Yeah, it's just every it, like my the whole point of my argument was just that the frustration about selling something that is clearly not the end as the end, and then showing up later like that never happened. You know, just being like, oh, here's this new thing. It's like, what happened to the other thing? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, just own up to it. And, and I don't know. That frustrates me because I, av- av- I take advertising very seriously, and so I mean, when, when you're selling one thing and doing something else, it, it bugs me. At the time, do you think that they thought it was the end? Nope. You think that they planned on all the additional crap afterwards? Yeah. I mean, it's why they, they didn't kill Master Chief or Cortana. Well, I think it's funny. You know, they, kill they, them all. They should just kill them all. I, mean. I think, well, what's funny is like... I'm really surprised to hear you say that, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Bungie didn't want as many sequels as Microsoft wanted. I mean, that's the problem. That's why yeah. we have Destiny now. Um, so it was the end of Bungie's fight. Right. That was the fight that it was the end of. Yeah, because if you think so about it, we went... Legitimate Halo. We went for years with side stories, prequels, and stuff like that. Like, you have... Bungie didn't want to create another story, and that's why 343, you know, are, are delving into this stuff. Um, you know, so, so yeah, I mean, in a way, like, yeah, they did finish the fight against the Flood and all of that. And, and the funny thing is, is I don't even know, like, if Halos are going to be relevant ever again. You know? Oh, the actual Halo. He doesn't yeah. mean Halo oh, games. Oh, yeah, I was, like the, I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's actually, like, the rings in the sky. They'll right. be relevant again. They'll come back. They'll come back, baby. Uh, so we should end corrections music, please, even though I didn't say start it. I'm, I'm assuming you know when to end it. Uh, we want to talk about a big news story this week. You know I love to start with a game announcement. And boy, did we ever get some game announcements this week. It's, well, this show is basically going to be talking about game announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, Deuce X, Mankind. Why are you doing that? Dividend. 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 <laughs> Oh, How boy. huge is that? A new Deuce X game. Oh my god. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. You know what it is? I'm like trolling for corrections now. I'm like wanting to correct me. I dare you. Um, so Deus Ex, a, a huge sequel to Human Revolution. Uh, that's cool. That was just announced this week. That'll be coming to PC, to PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, those only. Uh, and this is a direct sequel. It takes two years after uh, Deus Ex uh, uh, Human Revolution. And it revealed a huge trailer. We got some screenshots, and I want to know what everyone's impressions of what we saw this week are. I can see the screenshots. Um, Well, it's funny. The screenshots leaked. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And, I mean, they're gorgeous. You know, they they got close-ups of your gun uh, instead of, like, having, like, a start menu where you would go and uh, change your uh, options on your weapon. You, uh, You basically see it. Uh, you like look at your gun and you're like, "There's my scope. I'll just switch that out there." And uh, so it's kind of like that's sort of sort of what's did implied. Did Crisis do that? It's yeah. been yeah. done, but yeah. I can't remember who did it. Yeah. Uh, Dead yeah. Space kind of did that. Yeah. And Batman does that too. Like a lot of the menu stuff is in real yeah, time. Yeah, Dead Space is really cool with that. Mm-hmm. I love that big time. Especially in a futuristic game. But Raging Brandon, what do you think about this announcement? What do you think about this game? Uh, I did not play Human Revolution. Uh, I. I remember I did a uh, one of our streams with Huber where we went through like an hour and a half of the original Deus Ex. So like I don't have uh, that much experience with Deus Ex, but I love this trailer. And I actually was kind of jaded about, about the original Human Revolution trailer because we had done countdowns. We did the top 100 trailers of all time and we put that like in the 80s or something. And of all of the trailers that were in our top 100, that probably was the one that people were like, I can't believe that this amazing cinematic trailer did not impress you. And one of the big things for it that didn't impress me was just, it just seemed really generic. Not the story, but just the action that I was seeing. She was just kind of running around beating up random people. And I'm like, this doesn't mean anything to me. And then you play the game, then, oh, all of a sudden it means everything because now I know who these people are. But I didn't know who they were watching the trailer. So it doesn't interest me that he's just walking around slapping people. And the dialogue, I thought, in the first trailer for Human Revolution was was god-awful. I mean, it was just like, (laughs) he was just, everything he was saying was extremely generic. They would show me, Uh, it's like a picture's worth a thousand words. Like, he, he would show me something, and all of these thoughts would go running through my head. And then he would say the first most obvious thought. I didn't ask for this. Is where that comes from. Um, I didn't yes. ask for this. Yeah. 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 
Uh, but it's like he would say titles, like like a title would pop up, and then he would say what I'm reading. And so it's just like duh. it was just really obvious and in your face, and just like and and you know like and his voice was just like really silly and gruff, and like I just it, there was so many there was just a lot of it that uh, was really cheesy. Love this total 180. I mean, like, I think this is really great. I think they did a good job of setting up characters. I really like the guy in the hood that he like yeah. saves from getting beat up, or I don't know if he saves him from getting beat up. They kind of like cut around that that event. But you see this guy, this you know with with. Um, He's uh, augmented, uh, with, uh, an augmented guy, like yep. um, who's obviously you know d you know down on his luck, and then gets kind of recruited by this this uh, this terrorist organization, and you see him like you know either killing himself in a bombing or placing a bomb and move, going away from the scene, and you see Jensen like dealing with the reaction from that, and then you know you set up this boss, and then he fights the boss, like it just it all it had context, which you love, Kyle. And so uh, I, I I think they did a good job turning it around, and the music so good, and actually is, in the trailer uh, says how you can download the track. Sorry. Is uh, is the Jensen? Is that the main guy? Is Adam he, Jensen, yeah. Is he voiced by Timothy Oliphant? Is that? It sounds like Timothy Oliphant. It is not Timothy Oliphant. Uh, hmm. uh, but it is uh, Michael McCann doing the music again, so it's the same guy. Oh, cool. Uh, and I think, oh man, I think he's the guy that did Monkey Island or something like that, or Grim Fandango. Hmm. Grim yeah. Fandango to Deus Ex. That's versatility. But um, yeah. <laughs> I could be wrong on that, so we'll get corrections. But I think that's right. Wait, why would you bring it up if you're not even like <laughs> close to like? Well, I'm, he wasn't sure about Timothy Olyphant. I'm pretty that sure. Up. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, why do we do we're that? Throw, we're just throwing My, darts at the board. You know, one of these might stick. Mine was a question. I was asking. Well, I, you can't I know, be corrected on a question. I know that he's the same guy that did the previous, and I'm pretty sure he did the other games. So I'm not sure, but I think like the heavy from Team Fortress Two is in this trailer. Is he's that kind of like I don't that know guy? About that, Kyle. I don't know. Okay. Well, but anyways, he's a big ball guy. Um, <laughs> no, that, better I, the Kingpin. I did play the previous, well, the, the original, and then the previous game. Um, and I played the original in preparation for um, Human Revolution. So I like I missed it like when it was the new hotness. But yeah, I went back to it. And, it. and it's a hard game. Like if you hadn't played it back in the day, it it's a hard game to get started on because it is more RPG than shooter. Uh, so even things like aiming is stat based and can be really tough to adjust to. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's interesting because these are still prequels to that original story. So it's it'll be weird when they start getting closer and closer. Like I wonder like you know how they'll set up concluding things. It's like Metroid Prime. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, but at the same time, like that old story, like a lot of the th the the themes and stuff are good, but like a lot of the specifics. Definitely feel dated and cheesy nowadays. How do you mean by that? They just yeah, like he was saying, like the stuff that like feels like really like super obvious or like retreading things, like you know, like conspiracies and things like that. Um, just kind of borrowed from other medium. Uh, Brad, do you think the Twitch thing was stupid? I have no. I didn't really watch it. You're right. I should explain the Twitch thing to anyone also in the audience who yeah. like doesn't know what that means. So uh, Square Enix hosted a weird Twitch stream which showed like some guy in a in a cell getting tortured, or or at least yeah, like like mentally tortured. They were playing polka music at him, and he's like, "No, stop it!" Uh, and so you could like vote on whether you want to resist or uh, fight against what was happening. This was all going to be a days long reveal leading up to the reveal. Days. Yeah, oh multiple God. days, and at the end, Deus Ex would be revealed. Oh man! Uh, of course, it leaked ahead of time, and then like, you know they're just like, okay, here's a trailer, everybody. Uh, Brad, was a Twitch idea stupid, or was it just another case of leaks? I think it games? was a smart idea. It got people invested in it and watching their stream. Did so it publicity for them. I thought it was a good idea. It did. I mean, when I peeked at it, it was at it was like nine thousand. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, nine thousand weirdos just watching a guy, an actor, get tortured. I wouldn't watch it, but some people <laughs> obviously did. <laughs> I think a day is about as long as you can pull that off. That's yeah, a good thought. You actually, like yeah, start at that. Start at that morning. Get people talking about it, and then at the at the very latest, the next morning, then release the trailer. Right. But it's like if you know, you, you never want to come out and be like, "Oh, you guys don't know what this is," and it's like, "I will. I'll hack your servers. I'll find it." You mm -hmm. know, it's like you don't want to call everybody to just be like, you know, put a big target on your head and be like. Nobody knows. It's like they're gonna find it, yeah. and so if you if you uh, um, hopefully have people being like, oh, I don't want to spoil this because I'm actually curious to see how this plays out. Like, I don't want to leak this because you know if I leak this ahead of time, then they might just stop this, and I'm actually curious to see where this only problem things go. Only problem with that is you're in Twitch, 
Twitch chat immediately was probably like Deus Ex, Deus Ex, Deus Ex. This is it. This but is that it. I mean, yeah. that's still good though. I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah but I'm saying for the people it. who don't want to like see it, they actually want to be a part of the experience of going through all of it. Right. You got to full screen it. Yeah. What's weird to me is that kind of thing. It. I mean, I didn't actually watch it, but I mean, I can't imagine like anyone thinking it's anything other than like some kind of weird like interactive film like you like nobody believes they're actually torturing a person right right right. and it was actually looping it wasn't like a live feed yeah. it turned out to be uh so yeah a, a silly thing you know always count on the leak but back to the game plan on the leak which we didn't actually see but but i think what i did see from that trailer is sort of similar to the human revolution trailer where you, you saw a bunch of the abilities that you would have um, in, in in the this CG trailer um, and and getting put to use and I, and I think that's good because uh, like I think the last thing he like it looked like he like put up some kind of armor or something like that to, to block all the bullets coming at him and I think what's good about that is uh, it hopefully alludes to not like losing all of your abilities and regaining them you know because <laughs> You don't want to be two years later and it's like, oh, I'm starting from scratch uh, with how my, my character is going to upgrade. He was already augmented. You got these things. So now, you know, maybe some things would be upgraded, but you would hope to have some of those abilities still, and then you would get brand new ones. That was sort of uh, my takeaway, too, is it, it seemed like the big wow moments were his abilities like oh he can go it it was seemed like an homage intentional or not to Metal Gear Solid 2 with this stealth suit in the rain on the bridge yeah uh, it seemed like that was the focus to me yeah yeah I mean that, and that's the thing that's really actually very interesting about Deus Ex in general like both the original and Human Revolution is it's 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 such a mix of uh, so many different things because it's it's an RPG very much. Uh, but then it's also a stealth game, and uh, and then you have the the shooter and action elements, and you can play it in all of these different styles. Yeah. So you know, we'll probably like nominate for best puzzle game at Game of the Year awards. <laughs> oh man, we won't let that go. <laughs> but, but that's the thing too. Even the hacking system in Human Revolution, like that that was really inventive, and, and like a lot of times hacking can be really annoying. And this, and in this case, it it was you know it was this mix of your skill and the stats Just level up your hacking yeah so yeah. It, it became easier if you had higher stats and then there were you know if you weren't invested in that there were just doors you weren't going to get into yeah in certain areas it's like yeah i don't need to see that email i don't care right yeah there was, there was really cool things about that game uh brandon do you expect to see this game released soon no okay because uh, I think that's what happened with Human Revolution. We had we were we were stuck with that trailer for a long, a long time. That's true. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that was it. Um, but I think uh, one of the things that they have going for them is you know the, uh, the the progression that we saw with Human Revolution. So we got this CG trailer, which seemed to kind of be selling a world like I don't know. Is a world going to look like this? Is a game going to look like this? We're going to have these abilities, and yeah, you had all of them. Like everything he did in that first trailer came to fruition in the actual game. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they they proved that, and that's how they're going to do it. And so. Um, I think people can can be uh, fairly anticipated for the game, knowing that what they're looking at, the characters, the world, and the abilities are all gonna that that's what they're that's what they're gonna be. Yeah, what I think is you know again, anytime you have like a, a second game in a series, it's you know it, there's always this promise of okay, now they figured out how to do it, and so they can expand on that and make it better. Um, so you know, I think some of the, like obviously the, one of the biggest complaints from the previous game was that the boss fights didn't feel like they had any place in the game and were just really kind of hard and unfair and not that great. Well, it's because they outsourced and, them. Yeah. Yes. And then, so the director's cut kind of addressed that from what I understand, yeah. uh, although I never went back and played that. Um, so, you know, I think this time they will more than likely, you know, either have no boss fights or they will, you know, they will do them themselves and they will figure out what actually makes them work in the game. There will be boss fights, I promise you. Uh, we had another huge announcement. Oh my gosh, Lego uh, Dimensions. <laughs> oh. Let me explain to you, if you're just listening to this, if you're just watching this and you're like, what is Lego Dimensions? Why is anyone getting excited Is it only on this? Wii U? No. No, 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 no it's, it's not everything. Okay. Okay. Bloodworth is criticizing the image I pulled up. He's mad it's not I'm not PS4 criticizing, I'm just asking. I, I didn't know about it. <laughs> so this is a Toys to Life Lego game. I didn't 
we actually we had a segment not too long ago where we talked about franchises that could be Toys to Life games. We never brought up Lego. We I, was I on that segment? Yes. yes. And I didn't bring up Lego. You didn't. I've been saying that for years. I think yeah. we, we were forever. thinking Tunnel Vision. We were thinking of like what movie franchises could be turned right. into a Toys to Life. We're thinking about like could Activision do Toys to Life? We weren't thinking like hey Lego should just use tons of franchises all in one. And there, here it is. This right. is crazy. Uh, so what it is, I mean. It is. It's 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 a it's Lego toy to life. You know, it's like your your Skylanders or your Disney Infinities, uh, but it's everything Lego already has in sets. So you have a, a Batman and Gandalf and Wild Style all in this starter set. By the way, I think that's like poor Wizard from the Lego Movie. He really got shafted here uh, because he just got placed by <laughs> Gandalf. But generally, that looks like the the Lego Movie poster. Right. But it's Gandalf. It, but it's Gandalf, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, so did the did the Legos come off of the bases? The way Absolutely, they okay. yeah. Like they're actually legit Legos that you can just play around with, but you also got cool bases. And I mean, this is and Batman front and center. That's yeah. a direct competition <laughs> to uh, you know yeah. Marvel superheroes. Yeah, yeah. you're like, right. That's the one thing that Disney does not have, will never have, is Batman. That, and that's basically what they're going to grab. They're going to grab everything Disney doesn't have. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, Nintendo obviously isn't going to have any third party, you know, stuff with Amiibo, maybe. And like, I doubt it. You know, they still have a lot more stuff and then their own catalog to, to, to release. But um. let's talk about the like specifics of this. So, this is a $90 starter pack. It gets those three figures 99. I just explained. 99? 99. Oh, I wrote that down wrong. 89. Oh my gosh. It's eight, uh, 89 in uh, the UK, I think. I think it's 100 bucks in the States. Wow. 100 yeah. US dollars. For, uh, you know, three figures of Batmobile and the portal. And, you know, the ability to play this game. That's the game. Uh, so then you got your, your level packs. This features a level, one minifig, one vehicle, maybe two vehicles. Two vehicles. The, the first level pack is Back to the Future. It comes with Marty McFly, the DeLorean, and his uh, skateboard from Back to the Future 2. I'd call that a hoverboard. Hoverboard, sorry. Um, but also, like, <laughs> Get it right. there's never been Back to the Future Legos, right? Nope. So, like, that's also an announcement of Back to the Future Lego. Yep. How yeah. crazy is that? That is nice. random, but awesome. And we were talking about that earlier, actually, that my prediction is that we're never going to get another Lego game other than this. That this and any, any franchise they buy or get or that they haven't done before, uh, it's going to be this. And they're going to they're funnel into this guy. Oh, kind, so kind of like, like Disney. Like Disney's not going to make any other huge games. It's, so what it's you all going to be Infinity. If I want Lego Lord of the Rings, another one, it's just going to be a set within Dimensions, yep. is what you mean. Don't the Disney games not do as well, though? Well, they have mobile stuff. They like, like, shut down. All, like, the, whole, all, all their, their mobile market's killing it. Like so. console games or whatever. Yeah. They, they don't do well. But Lego games do do well. Right. I think they're going to have both still. Yeah. They're going to keep both too. going until one of them starts drying up. Because the thing is, is even as successful as all of uh, the TT games, Lego games have been, They've still been putting out Lego shovelware that you know nobody really even pays any attention to. Um, no, what is Lego shovelware? Like they do like Bionicle and Ninjago and all this kind of stuff. Like they sure. they do these you know standalone uh, games that you don't even really get much in the way of trailers or exposure. You know they just kind of put them on the shelf and then you walk into to Best Buy and like what I didn't know this game existed. Yeah, there's a new one about animals, but I don't think it's fair to call them shovelware just because they're not promoted. Um. It may be fair. Uh, well, yeah, it was like, when was the last time you, you played? Like, I don't actually know how good they are anymore, but I think in the past that they've just not been great. Not to mention they have an online game. They have a, there's a Lego MMO. Yeah. Uh, there's a, f- a free-to-play game that's not the Lego MMO. Like, there's other Lego that stuff That one I there. played, actually, it blows. Yeah. It's like Diablo, but with... Uh, and that's really funny. That's almost toys to life. You, like, buy packs, and then you, like, use a code, and you take that character into your game. But... Um, do we know who's developing this? Is it TT? It's yeah. TT Games. Cool. Yeah. So that's that kind of leads lends well to Brandon's theory that this is it, man. This is where all the Lego games are going to be. I, I think that there will still be things that will be standalone movie franchise things that won't want to get in the mix. Um, I mean, because what the ones we're seeing so far are ones that already have games, so you couldn't like just throw together a sequel to them. Well, Wizard no. of Oz, they've never done. Right. We got Back to the Future, man. Okay. Yeah, they've never done. Um, Wizard of Oz is a great one to bring up. But I, I mean, would you know. make? Would, well, I guess you could make a standalone Wizard of Oz. I mean, I don't think they would, though. I don't think they'd make a standalone Back to the Future or Wizard of Oz. But like, I think they're definitely going to keep making the Batman's and the Lord of the Ringses and the Harry Potters. And well, Lord of the Rings. Stuff. Well, no, I know, well, but I think Batman they're going to make. They'll be in this too. Everything will always be in this. But like a hundred dollar asking price versus like impulse buy thirty dollars of a Lego game, you're going to make more money with the latter. 
Right, okay, but more the, once you get the starter pack, then all of the other packs that they add on are, are thirty bucks. Or it's like, like they pay for themselves. Or something. Yeah. So like all of these like kind of like B C level franchises, you know, not to say anything bad about Back to the Future, but it is not a Batman or not a right. Star Wars or something like that. Star Wars, speaking of, certainly not going to be in this anymore. See ya. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think I, I just why would you not want to be a part of this? Because it, it it builds into the whole collector's mentality. It's like. If you have some weird franchise like Wizard of Oz, it's like, ah, if they made a Wizard of Oz Lego game, it's like, ah, I can sit that one. I love Wizard of Oz. It's great. But like, I don't really, really need to get it. But if like, I'm obsessed with collecting this whole thing, if I like, got to have all of the dimension figures, then like, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. I didn't, you know, like Ninjago, I don't even know what that is, but I got to have it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I just think I, I'd be, I'd be very surprised if they release another full game. Uh, I'm not saying it's like guaranteed not to happen, but I'd be shocked. Yeah, I mean, uh, if we're looking strictly at, at them as Toys to Life products, I think what's cool is you can use them as regular old Legos at the same time. Uh, you know, they, they do serve that dual purpose probably better than any of the other Toys to Life do. The other Toys to Life are, you know, statues to life. And they're the smallest Toys to Life games on consoles. There's also Sick Bricks, which just came out, but that's mobile only. Um, so I think, for me, that's a great sell. It's like, oh, thank you. I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to these gigantic Huge monstrosity box. things that I have to, like, <laughs> you know, uh, put up. So. Are the figures just actual Lego guy yep. size? Yep, they have little yeah. stands that, they, so that you can put them on. So it's $100 for three little regular Lego guys that are usually $2 each? Plus the game, plus the portal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, game. Legos are pretty expensive Legos now. are very expensive. Yeah. They always been. Yeah. But like a man, you can buy a Lego man for, like, five bucks or something. Right? No, like, like even even like little figure? minifigs are so expensive, dude. Oh my God. And so yeah, if you want to buy like a minifig, the way that they do it is a uh, fun packs. So those are fifteen dollars, which I think is like the regular price for a Skylander or an Infinity Man, right? Right. So the fun pack that they are are uh, hawking right now is the Spaceman from the Lego Movie. Yeah, who comes with his spaceship, I think. So that's like character and um, like character and vehicle. Sorry, there's funny shenanigans happening in the studio. I got distracted. But yeah, so you get a character in a vehicle. You can build a vehicle and you can build a character. It's just like, God, that's so cool to me. I'm way, for some reason, we just last week, we like ragged on Amiibo so hard. And then here comes Lego. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. No, I can, I can lay it out for you. I know exactly why. Okay, I, I thought of all sorts us. of reasons when I first heard about this. We don't need Please to do, do the whole conversation. <laughs> We don't, well, but I, 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 I want to bring, okay. I bring okay. up something that we haven't talked about. Okay. That I actually have never addressed yeah, yeah. here at work. And okay. that's Traveler's Tales. They actually have a developer that is directly associated with this franchise. Mm -hmm. Whereas who's associated with, with Amiibo? I don't know. Who's developing each of the compatibility elements to each game? Who's doing quality control on that? No idea. No one's representing. There's no one person that's like, I'm the Amiibo guy. It's just like, nope, they just like jump into each development team that's working on every Nintendo game. And it's like, hey, how's that Amiibo thing going? Like, oh, God, right. Yeah, we got to do that stupid Amiibo thing. Okay, what yeah. are we going to do? Let's Versus like Traveler's Tales being like, let's do this. You know, like I can, you know, I, well, we have all sorts of ideas. Oh, my God. Now that we, let's do this weird franchise that we pitched five years ago that they turned down. Because like, no, we're not going to do a full price game for that. That like, oh, a $30 pack? Yeah, we'll totally do that. Wizard for, of Oz, here we go. Yeah. Exactly. Great point. Hmm. So, RoboCop, yes, let's do it. You know, just whatever. You know, like. <laughs> well, hold on. <laughs> You're right, why not? Like, this blows the door open. To see Batman in a game with Gandalf is so insane. That's, the, like, super cool. What a world we live in. And they're already toys, and it's a uniform style. That's the thing I don't like about Amiibos. It's like, every now, every time we get a new one, it's like, you put the two peaches from Mario Party and Smash Brothers together, and they are two different characters. Whereas, like, you know, that you, you line all these guys up and they're all Legos as an established franchise. I think Skylanders is in trouble. I think, uh, I think Skylanders, uh, I, I won't say that they're dated. I, you know, they could run for another 10 years and, you know, just because, like, I'm not eight. Like, I don't know that, that passion that those kids feel for that franchise. But it's like, you have Amiibo with a Nintendo line. You have Disney with all of their properties. You have Lego with pretty much that's going to scoop up everything else. And Skylanders has their gimmicks. That's the only thing that they use to sell every game. So, like, those gimmicks better be real good. Or like the moment they run out of ideas, you know, the kids are like, uh, I'm gonna go play Lego. They're gonna put Crash Bandicoot in Skylanders. But again, it's like even that's like that feels like a stretch. You know, some or just trying to get some other people would buy it property. They'd Perfect. buy that version, but then next year what do you do? You know? Whereas this Crash this you just goes runs and runs and runs forever. Like <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a competitor. I feel come, like come to Legoland, get a free dimension yeah, yeah. figure. Like, totally. oh, get a free dimension pack exclusive to Legoland. Like, you would do it. Gotta go to California. I've never been to Legoland, but I would go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm on board. I'll come too. Uh, I feel like this is a thing where you can already call it a success. Sure. We, we can yeah. write November's article today. We can just say, yeah, dimensions sold very I well. I already started the review, blood. I already started. <laughs> 
Uh, cool. Good. Good. Uh, good on them. Good announcement. Well handled. I, I thought it was cool. Also, also teasers. Okay. Um, there's an extended version of the trailer. Whoa. You guys haven't seen it. Uh, that thank goodness has more uh, Joel McHale comedy in it. But um, wait, hold on. Was that sarcastic? Uh, yes, that was sarcasm. Oh, oh I man. thought he did okay. I thought he was all right. I thought he did do okay. I, I didn't necessarily need three more minutes of him like <laughs> cracking jokes. Uh, his wife's in it now. Like his wife like calls out from another room or oh, something weird. and like. Um, but uh, he in, in it he brings up the Ghostbusters like sensor. Whoa! Mm. To like check the portal to see if it's like got a thing and so like I, I don't know if it was like straight from Ghostbusters. It might look different, but it did have the two little you know dinghies that pop up on the side. So if they I don't know if that was a reference. Yeah, he picks up Wild Style and he puts her on a uh, toy that was from the Man of Steel playset that was Zod's ship from Man of Steel. And uh, there's a stack of books, and on top of the books is a big dinosaur. So, like, I don't know if that was a Jurassic Park reference. Yeah. And for some reason, right over his shoulder the entire time that he's putting the thing together is Defender. is an arcade cabinet for Defender. And uh, uh, Robotron, the arcade game, is also right behind him. It's like, mm. why, would they, why would they specifically put that in the room right behind him that you'd see the whole time? I don't that, know. Those two things to me, I love your analysis, the other points. Those two things to me are just like, let's make him look like a gamer. Yeah. Joel McHale, let's which, make his house look cool. which games did you cool like? He's like? He's like, I don't know, modern games are hard for me, but I always love Defender. So like, okay, we'll put a Defender cabinet in there. That'll make you look cool. God, but that, I don't know, that would be a really interesting angle to like go for old school uh, arcade Ghost games Busters. or old school Crash Bandicoot or something, yeah, yeah old school uh, uh, game franchises and characters that Nintendo doesn't own or Disney. Yeah. Well, we know Ghostbusters is coming back, so that totally makes sense. Oh, you're right. It's going to be ladies, mm-hmm. little little Lego ladies. Yeah, but they'll probably do the old yeah, school Yeah, aren't they doing two too. versions? They're, they're allegedly doing two. They're doing a male and a female version of the Ghostbusters. That's hilarious. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Not to, not to tangent. <laughs> no, we're going to... I'm sorry. Not we got to go dig off into on this. Another. Wait, wait. I'm is sorry. That the movies or the Legos? Movies. 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 What? So no, Paul, Paul Feig is doing the women's Ghostbusters, and then like three weeks later, they're like, "Oh yeah, no, we're doing a male one too." Who? Oh, what? Uh, uh, with um, what's his name? Seth Rogen. Twi- no, Twenty One Jump Street. What's his name? Johnny Depp. James Duff? Franco. Je- no. Jonah Hill. Yeah, neither of those guys are in that. Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. There we go. Channing Tatum. Yeah. Ghostbusters. Oh, but Johnny Depp was in the original Twenty One Jump Street. Mike Huber's gonna be new yeah, Ghostbusters Johnny Depp film. Johnny Depp was in the first Twenty One Jump Street movie too. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, at the end. Oh, Shoot, nice. man, Spoilers. I don't know. That's like, a, I don't know how I feel about that. I think it's good. It's it's good to have fair represent both. both no, he can't guys. do it. It's you so that the dirtbag like middle America who hates women will actually go see this movie so they can make some money. But the other thing is like Channing Tatum will be good in a Ghostbusters movie. Like the poor guy can't be in a bad movie. <laughs> He sells for sure, oh, but again, it might, it might be a rumor. Jupiter it might, it might actually have already been debunked, and I missed that headline. Yeah, so, Ascending. but Jupiter I remember Ascending. seeing the headline of them announcing it. It's sick. <laughs> Channing Tatum is sick in Jupiter uh, Ascending. What do you say? Good film, bad movie, or is it the other way around? Oh, good movie, bad, bad film, film, good movie. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. White House Down, maybe. Who knows? Uh, so let's talk about Level Five. Uh, Level Five is the hero of Japanese developers. Started small, is now one of the big ones. Konami wishes it was level five. <laughs> uh, and so they had a big uh, big stream of announcements this week, which were pretty cool. Uh, one of the ones that got a lot of headlines that I want to address first uh, are two games, uh, Layton 7 and Fantasy Life 2 uh, were announced as mobile games. And uh, the articles are just like, wow, two popular 3DS games are getting sequels on phones. Does this is this the end? Does this spell the so I should explain hmm. to anyone who wrote that article, uh, and to anyone who's listening saying Layton Seven on mobile? I'm mad. Uh, Layton Seven is not the seventh Layton game. Uh, Fast Seven is the seventh Fast and Furious movie. Layton Seven uh, is just a reference to the number of characters in that game. It's it's kind of like a mafia game where you have to figure out which one's the vampire amongst these seven people. Which is cool. Is that That's, really the plot? Yeah. Cool. So that's what Layton 7 is. Do not think this is the seventh Layton game that's going to be on mobile and get mad about that. However, Fantasy Life 2 is Fantasy Life 2. It is a sequel of a 3DS game that's going to be on your phone, will be free to start, and you will have to buy crystals in this. Is that troubling? No. Okay. Uh, Level 5 has been doing mobile stuff for a long time. Uh, I think maybe uh, maybe this Layton game is the, the anomaly, uh, but... You know, I can't remember if there's been a latent game on mobile before. Uh, there's been a, a latent game by name on mobile before. Okay. It was a weird one that wasn't quite starring Professor Layton. Okay. It was, yeah, it was a weird <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, it doesn't feel really that unusual to me. Uh, 
especially considering you know how much stuff that level five has had on mobile over the years um but uh so here's what's weird about fantasy life 2 though is it's like using the same environments from the 3ds game uh but now it's just a, a game you hold in your hand like why would you make a sequel to a 3ds game use most of the environments the same and then make it a free to start game I think like 80% of the people that play in that game have not played the first or maybe even heard of the first right. Fantasy Right, Life. so why make it a sequel? That's what, I guess that's what I'm stuck on is that two. So you get both. So you get the new people who have never heard of Fantasy Life and they check out the game because they hear it's good mm -hmm. and you get all the people who did play the first Fantasy Life because they're fooled into thinking it's a sequel. Okay. <laughs> no, you're right, Brandon. That's, <laughs> that's a simple answer. <laughs> Sequel and I'm excited. Stuff. I think I think one of the big things for me is I, I would get bummed if a uh, a popular franchise was brought to mobile that I really like controlling with a controller, and then I was nervous like, oh no, now this franchise is completely moving to mobile. But like, I don't think Layton or Fantasy Life are games that you necessarily. Right. Fantasy Life seems like a perfect mobile game. You know, that, that definitely seems like um, you know, kind of like a, a village based, you know, class based. Like, I don't know, is the combat really grueling in Fantasy Life? That you it's really not, need that no, dexterity. It's a, it's a lot of tapping. Yeah. So. I think it makes sense. I'm excited. I'm actually, I, I uh, was tempted to check out Fantasy Life on 3DS and didn't have the time for it, but uh, I'll probably check out, because it's right here. Boom. I don't, oh, have my, I don't have my 3DS on the table, but I got my phone here. Ooh, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. That's what they wanted to hear. Oh, <laughs> they no. got you. They got me. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> it's only the second game in the franchise. It's not, like a tw it's not like a 15 year old series. It's, it's not just like, like oh, it's the, the beginning of the end. That went to iOS or whatever, the new one, which made a lot of people mad, I think. Oh, from Capcom? Yeah. Uh, is that out? I don't know if it's I out think yet. it's not out yet, but, but you're then, right. That yeah. does suck. That's a good, Brad. Thank you. What That's a great it? example. Breath of Fire. Direct, oh. like the next Breath of Fire yeah. game is going to be a mobile game. Yeah. Well, I think that's just kind of like you know, if they announced that you know, Dragon Quest XI was only on mobile. That's the kind of that's the same kind of reaction, you know. Yeah, like Fantasy Life. You're right. Fantasy Life isn't there yet. I think yeah. nobody loves Fantasy Life that yeah, yeah. much. And but so it's already it's on like, a handheld. It's not like it's had console versions Legacy. of Fantasy Life. Yeah. No legacy, exactly. So yeah, I, I think nobody's too mad about it. I don't think it's like a a, a, a death knell. It's not like you know 3ds is done. In fact, uh, Yokai Watch 3 was announced during this event, and like we look, we have kind of blank faces here in our on our desk in the United States. Uh, but that is a huge game, huge franchise in Japan. Uh, it is doing very well for level five. I guess the toys are doing really well for Bandai Namco, where they're just like. This is where we make most of our money is selling toys from this video game that we don't make, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and so uh, part of that announcement of, of three is announced. Also, Nintendo will be publishing the game elsewhere uh, in North America and basically every other country where Nintendo publishes games. They're going to be publishing Yokai Watch. That's all they said. And I want to have a discussion about actually what the right way to bring a, a here. This doesn't happen very much. A game that's huge in Japan we don't have here. Like last is like Pokemon, right? And what's cool about Pokemon is we finally caught up 15, minutes, 15 years later. We're finally getting worldwide releases. This is a game they just announced three. Yokai Watch 1 came out in 2011. If you're Nintendo, do you give us Yokai Watch 1 or do you skip to three? Well, I, I think it depends on how the games play out. I mean, I feel like this is more. I mean, Pokemon's a good example. It's not the most recent example because we also have Professor Layton. Um, and then uh, there's another one I was just thinking of. Professor but, Layton was never a phenomenon. Um, and then, well, it kind of was. And then, oh, never. Ace, Ace, <laughs> Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney's the other one. Also, not a phenomenon. I got to make it clear how well this game is selling. This is crazy right now. Yokai Watch. But, but in any case, whether, okay. uh, how big or not they are, yes. they are games that were popular in Japan. Yeah. And then came over later. And we've been, I mean, Layton has always been like a game behind. Right. Um, and then uh, Ace Attorney, they just like started from scratch and like redid all of them on the the DS before making sequels. But uh, but yeah, so it's 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 interesting because it it can work that way, but it just sort of depends on like how you know how much do we need that? Like how much story or whatever is there to go with, or can they just make three be kind of like everything in one and just put that out worldwide. That's an interesting idea I didn't think of, is just include all of them in one package. Oh, you gotta separate them. You gotta come out. I, I say come out with the first one. I think the big thing is like is like gameplay mechanic. Like if it's if it's a totally new game that is unlike anything that we're playing in the US, like do that first one. But if 
you know, by the time they got to the third one, it's a little more competitive, maybe with like a direct game. Like I, I'm just throwing up random games because I've never played this game, but like a Clash of Clans or a, a Flappy Bird or something where it's like, it's really similar to that. And we don't want the US audience being like, well, I kind of like this game. I don't want to play this weird little import. But if it has new mechanics or is a system that, that the US audience isn't familiar with, release the first one, then the second one, then the third one, you know. I feel like it's make bank most on similar to Pokemon. It is, that's, yeah. you, you could, that's probably the best comparison you could draw. And so, my wish is they just skip to three. My wish is they do like Final Fantasy, just like, Final Fa here it is, here's Final Fantasy three. And it's like, no it isn't, this is six. It's like, whatever, here it is, it's a great game, just play this one. You know what I mean? I think releasing an old game might be an issue. I think it might feel old. And uh, just, if you do this thing where we gotta catch up every year, like you're gonna oversaturate Yokai Watch, I don't know, it's such a tricky issue. Brad, where do you stand on this? What, how should they release this game? It's just, like, to me, it all depends on the story, pretty much. Like, okay. If you, if you hop into three and you have no idea what's going on, that'd be a problem for me. Yeah, but and I, I, I don't really know what the game's about. So I think it actually is the same main character throughout each game, which is a tricky That's a little issue. bit of a problem for me. Yeah. Right? Okay. It's, it's about a, a little kid with a watch that lets him see these things that they call yokai. They don't want to refer to them as monsters or ghosts or anything. Yeah, but they're ghost monsters. Yeah, but it's, it's strange because of the way it's described. It's like, well, it could have been a spirit of a person or it could have been a spirit of an object that is aspiring to be something else. Like, really strange. Mm -hmm. But it is, it, it, it all goes into the creature designs, but this this one kid is the only one in, in the characters that can actually see these creatures what i'm thinking is if it does well enough then they'll start releasing the old ones like on eShop or something like that that's a cool idea too not full retail releases but just have like one and two on the eShop. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all yeah. right we also just know how it's scaled like how much different was two and three versus yeah. one yeah we have no idea you know you're like oh, i don't want to go back to one and have it look bad it's like i have a feeling all those games look like completely identical like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think three was just like you know harnessing some crazy new it's not an unreal you know it's not um, so yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, this isn't coming out till next year. They said 2016. You know? Oh. Yeah. So you know, I, I think it'll look dated by the time it comes out. But who knows? Who knows? But uh, that's we'll fun. We'll have to watch. Good for level five. I'm definitely rooting for level five. Oh, that was a joke. Yeah, sorry. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it took you a little while. <laughs> I'll have to watch and see. <laughs> what if uh? <laughs> The only way that like I can pick up on jokes is like if you just put that you have to watch you have yeah, like a yeah. weird little emphasis on it. Um, so gosh, we we got to talk about game reveals so much that was really exciting to me that I don't even want to talk about Don Matrick leaving Zynga. Here's what happened last week: Don Matrick left Zynga. The, this the person who founded Zynga is now CEO again, back in charge, and that's what that is. Okay, so let's do a little um, water cooler ranch. So I was listening to Keeley's podcast. While playing Bloodborne, forgive me, please. Oh gosh. Um, but I was, <laughs> I think it's called Game Slice, and it's called the Game Slice podcast. It's cool. It's worth listening to. Uh, he had Gabe Newell on as one of his guests. Uh, Gabe Newell said some very uh, disheartening things for anyone who is still holding out hope for a Half Life Three. Uh, and so I want to talk about that because we were talking about a little in the office this week, and I want to I want to bring it up here. I want to get it out on a podcast. Just hey, let's just. Let's just say, let's just say, no more Half-Life 3 jokes, more, it's done. If you're not convinced right now that that game is not in development, that is never happening, let me give you a quote. The best quote from Keeley's podcast. This is from Gabe Newell, in reference to Half-Life 3. The only reason we'd go back and do like a super classic kind of product, by which he's referencing a single player... <laughs> God. Super classic. Super classic? <laughs> those oh. old super classic story-based first-person shooters. God, remember those. Okay, sorry, I'm going to continue. <laughs> those were the days. The only way we'd go back and do like a super classic kind of product is if a whole bunch of people just internally at Valve said they wanted to do it and had a reasonable explanation of why. What is not the reasonable explanation? How about you left it on a cliffhanger? People want it. You promised it. You promised, yeah. well, you promised Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Right. It's just never coming. And there's nobody in Valve who say, hey, I have a good reason why. And what, But the thing is, is like, it doesn't even have to be like he described it. You know, it, it could be a lot of other things. So you're saying that like any first-person shooter with a story is outdated now? Because it could have some kind of co-op angle. It could have brand new mechanics. There's a lot of things it could do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a carbon copy of Half-Life 2. But I mean, like, that the problem with Valve is beyond that kind of mentality is 
They've got one of those weird new age structureless, no one's in charge, everyone has to sign off on everything. So like if you're like the PA intern guy who's in charge of the sound, you get to like sign off on story and stuff like that. And I've just heard horror stories from people who work there about things just never get done. Like a short film takes years to get finished because everyone has an opinion and everyone's... It's like this weird functionless agrarian nightmare. You mean like the Team Fortress 2 short films? Yeah, they take forever and don't get done. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so let's say I work for Valve. Uh-huh. Can I, can I legit, do you think I could legitimately say, hey, I don't like this short, can I help you write this? Yes. That's wow. what I've heard. Cool. I mean, like, I never worked there, but the, the stories I heard were that it was just like this nightmare and leaderless thing. So no, nothing will ever come out of Valve. Right, but here's the thing. is like Valve is very profitable. <laughs> right, because they, yeah. They, they make really, a store and they make things that you pay little in, in Yeah, I, mean, right. I, I that's think that's what they do now. That's the thing to me is like, I think what he's talking about in terms of being dated or classic. Super or, classic. Is, 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 he's not even talking about gameplay style. He's talking about pricing structures. Mm-hmm. That, you, like, no, how do we make a lot of money off of this? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. We sell it once and then we put it on sale. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that's 100% it, Blood. It's like, it is a $60 single player game. It is profitable. We've seen it be profitable. We've seen Skyrim sell like crazy. We've seen, well, GTA V actually is a huge multiplayer component. Uh, so scratch that off. But we've seen single player games be very successful. Uh, and so to say, oh my gosh, it's just not enough. It's not going to make Dota money though. You know, it'll never make as much money as Dota would. Why would you waste money on Half-Life 3? So we believe anything you say. That's why. <laughs> so I mean? get excited for anything you're doing. Because if Valve's like, hey, we got this idea and we're going to do this. Like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you're going to do it. Right. Because you said you were going to do this other thing and then you weren't. Like, I don't, you, I don't you, think Valve's the kind of company that you get excited about what they say anymore. Right. Valve's I, that's, a store right. and a, and a free to play company. So if that's what they want, great. But like, that's yeah. why I would do that. Because you, you actually, you'd actually have a company <laughs> like Naughty Dog that feels attached to a franchise like Uncharted or The Last of Us. You know, like you actually get that you know, excitement about a developer being close to the material that they produce and wanting to see it because they want to see that story told. And it's interesting to just completely be like, yeah, we don't care. I actually, like, we as a company officially don't care about story. Like, if you go back and play Half-Life 2 now, what are you doing? That game sucks. <laughs> you know? It's like that, you know, whatever. Well, that was a mistake. We shouldn't even gotten involved in this franchise to begin with. Yeah, it's Dota like, has over 100 characters. If you like characters so much, play Dota, you weirdos. <laughs> I think that's like a really weird statement, though. They're literally alienating the fan base that built them up. And now they're just kind of like, we don't care. They don't care. We got free yeah. to play games. They don't care. We got hats. Right. We don't care. Hats. So, exactly. <laughs> Brad... Uh, recently at GDC, they made a huge deal out of their, their, you know, their VR. We've made VR where you can hold things. You know, that was their, their mm-hmm. appeal. You can move around in a space and you can hold things and that feels realistic. Do you think it's lessened coming from Valve? Like, did, did you care less because it came from this company? No, I didn't care less. I mean, I feel like everyone's doing VR now. It's kind of a thing where I only really care when I get to use it. So I'm just kind of sure. like, oh, VR, cool. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Like... I'm just kind of like borderline on it. Yeah, do you, Brandon, do you think they're serious about VR? Do you, do you... I don't think they're serious about anything. <laughs> I don't think they're serious about anything. You could tell me Valve is doing anything and I don't care. It's like, all right, it's, it's like what you said. It's like, great, have fun because it's clear you guys are just doing one thing. Not to bring Final Fantasy into it, but like that's the issue I have about Final Fantasy. When they announced Final Fantasy 16, it's like, oh, that's cool. You're probably going to rename it something else. You're probably going <laughs> to you're probably going to decide six months from now that you actually want. Wait, no, wait, no, no, wait, no. Six, 16's online and 17. No, wait, no. 17's named something different, and then now we're no, wait, no, wait, no. Now, now this guy's directing Kingdom Hearts three, and now what? You know, it's like that's my issue with that. Is it, it, it sets yourself up as like, we're just winging it, you know? It's like every Monday is a whole new experience in this company where we just don't stick to anything and we just kind of, you know, you got an idea, great, let's do it. And like, that's not exciting to me. I think that's, that's what it is. They're sort of like a shitty Google. Cause like everything they do, <laughs> no, but for real, like everything that they do is just a new way to sell you things. Like they wanted to do the Steam box so that you can buy Steam games on it. They want to do VR so that you can buy Steam VR stuff on it. And this weird leaderless thing, you're, you're right. They're like, oh, Johnny's got this idea today. Let's try that. Eh, let's do Cynthia's idea. Eh, let's do this guy's idea. You know, like, 
And they're all just like, yeah, we can kind of maybe get it done someday, but whatever, we're making so much money, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And right, in the end, we are just five people in a, in a room who are upset, but like they don't need to worry about us. If they worried about us, they would make less money, and that's the crazy thing. What if they're saving Half-Life 3 for they're, the Brad, VR? Stop it! <laughs> God, we plant stop that seed. It, Brad, don't! <laughs> They're don't. just waiting. The whole reason I wanted to talk about this not was to talk so about we it. wouldn't do that anymore. Too bad. Oh. What if they're doing All it? All right, we're moving on. Let's no Shenmue, no Last Guardian. You're the one that started this conversation! That barely fits on the TV. It yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Had to tilt it even. Uh, so, uh, shoot, let's do, a, let's do a little quickie. This one's from Boston Shawnee D. I realize it's late in the week, but if you guys happen to see this comment, I would really like you to discuss... Who has the nicest singing voice? After watching the Bloodborne special, I realized that Bloodworth has an amazing voice. Can anyone topple that? <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I like. I'm in, I'm in a room with four other people who do, they're all singers. Yeah. Four other people? What? Yeah, yeah. I want to I I give credit to Brad because he's the only one who has the cojones to record himself. Well, actually, Ian, you're in a band, aren't you? I've been in several. Okay, so this is going to come down to Brad and Ian, I think. What? What? Yeah. What about Brandon? What, what are, are you, you talking about, son? What do you record, man? What kind of song? What do I record? Yeah. Oh, the my. Bloodborne thing. I recorded the Bloodborne They're musical. Bloodborne. Uh -huh. There's something I like to call Star Wars the Musical that is available Classic. online right now. Hold Classic. on. Check out. <laughs> Love it. That was me 20 years ago? That was yeah. 20 years ago. That's that what I'm saying. It's 20 years ago. You gotta, if you lay something to wax now, maybe I'll give you some points, but that was 20 <laughs> years ago. All right. How do I do that? What do I just make my own like YouTube channel and like sing a tune? Go to SoundCloud yes. like Brad does. You just put something up. You yeah. just, you make I'm not promoting anything. <laughs> oh, no, okay. no, no, no. All right. <laughs> if you want to find Brad's music, please go to SoundCloud.com slash Brad Ellis. No. Okay. No, 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 no. You won't find it. <laughs> my SoundCloud is slash Ian Hink, though. Is it? Yeah. So wait, do you put music that you've recorded on there? Yeah. Okay, well, there we go. So Ian mm -hmm. wins best voice of game trailers. Unless cool. blood, unless you recorded something on SoundCloud. What? No. no that, that's I'm metric. totally winging this. <laughs> yeah, that's not. The well, I have no training. I have no idea what I'm doing. Ian, you are the official judge of of GT time. How do we? What is our metric? How do we ju judge the best voice of game trailers? Whoever has the best voice. How do you judge that though? Like, do we need like a panel? Do you we just need listen to all the voices? And you, I mean, here's the thing. Brandon and I uh -huh. have both been in plenty of musicals. Right. I've been in like six bands. I've done all kinds of music stuff. He's done music stuff. Brad does music stuff. Brandon's a competent baritone. I'm a competent tenor. Brad, Brad what are you? you're a tenor, right? I have right? no idea. You're yeah, a tenor? He's, like a, he's probably a baritone. How many tenor. musicals have you been in, Brad? None. Bloodworth, how many musicals have you been in? One. The Bloodborne one. musical? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't trained or anything. I wasn't counting that one. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get my voice recognized by this website for so long now. <laughs> And it just, I swear. Let's do more musical stuff. Do more musical what stuff. Do no, more musical I did. Let's do all kinds. Yeah, I've been knocking around a Batman musical in my head for a while. <laughs> okay. Let's do but, uh, it. Too bad, it's like, too bad it's like right when E3 comes out. Uh, thank oh, you, wow. Boston Shawnee D, for, for sparking also, the Batman musical. Did, did, Bo did that person just watch the first two minutes and then stop? No, the, there's evidence of all of us singing Shawnee in the Bloodworth D, musical. Right, Shawnee D watched it and said Bloodworth is killing everyone right now with his, with nice. his voice. How does that make you feel? Confused. Right. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Uh, it's time for bets. Let's do some bets, everyone. I thought Don had the best voice in the Bloodborne musical. That's just me. Uh, <laughs> Don line. is the best of all of us. So, Mortal Kombat X releases on Tuesday. One of the new characters in the game's roster is Takashi Takeda, son of Kenshi. Already an obscure character. If you Google... Takashi Takeda, right now, in quotation marks, you will yield 128,000 results on Google.com. How many results will there be at this point next week? So, uh, Brandon, you are the first to reveal this week, I believe. All right. What your bet is. Let everyone know what you're feeling. 180. 180K. 180,000. 180,000. That's, that's what I'm calling. Well, I'm going way bigger. Go big or go home. Oh. One point two million. Whoa. Everybody's going to be every. This. Oh, no, I'm not going to justify it. Brad, you go ahead. What's your bet? Hundred and seventy-five. Okay. Ooh, close. Yeah. All right. And Bloodworth. Oh. Hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Whoa. Okay. 
<laughs> so, Blood, you think it will go down? You think fewer people, there will be fewer instances of the word Takashi Takeda it, now than after the game is released? It went down by 5,000 since you sent the email last night. Yeah. So whatever Google does is pretty much unpredictable. But the game isn't That's out yet, possible? Blood. What's going to happen? Yeah, it did go down. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's going to happen, Blood, is the game comes out, people are like, who's Takashi Takeda? And they're going to Google it, and then the results will go up. No, the results go up if there are more things written about Takashi yeah, Takeda. Yeah, on like message boards, in comment sections. Takashi you think Takeda's people are really going to write about Takashi Takeda? Yes. Probably not. All right, well, let me, so just, gonna write let me just lock those in. Okay, uh, great bets, everyone. Thank you uh, for putting thought into them. Uh, last week's bet, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, uh, released earlier this week. Our bet was where it would place on Xbox One's best sellers list. Uh, I'll go through what everyone bet actually. Blood, you bet it would be 17 on the best X1. Oh, on Amazon.com, I should make clear. Yeah. Go to Amazon.com. Uh, so, Blood, you said it would be at number 17. Yeah, that's probably way wrong. Jones, you said 55. I said it would be at number 8. Uh, Brad, for you last week, Andrea mm -hmm. was clutch. She said 36. It's at 40 right now. Oh, wow. Andrew Renee, Nicely done. She, she nailed it. She, super she cared about it. She wanted to do research. She wanted to win this for the super seat. I was close, though. Brittany, you this were is, real close. This is as close as I've been this season, other than my win. <laughs> uh, I do want to say, I, I was just curious. I wanted to see where it was on PS4. It's number 23 on PS4. Isn't that strange? So no, Blood no, would have been closer. That's not strange. Pedigree. Not strange at all. I, I think it is. Well, because of because uh, uh, I think Dark Souls sold better on Xbox 360. I think the Souls community is usually on Sony platforms. Yeah, people prefer that controller generally. No, what? No, no, no. For and Dark Souls, yeah. Souls games, yeah. And you're counting on you know the Bloodborne factor, which is people you know beat Bloodborne yeah. and the are now. BBF. Yeah, so about, yeah, BBF. The, the, the BBF. The BBF. The hashtag BBF. I was thinking of Bloodborne factor too. I was thinking Xbox One people would be like, man, I wish I could play Bloodborne. At least I have Dark Souls too. That's where I was coming from. No, they don't care. No, you're <laughs> wrong. Yeah, I think there are probably a lot of people that picked up Bloodborne and said, like, I didn't play Dark Souls, and now I, I like this, so let me get this, too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's... Even if they're not going to play it right away. Yeah, that's where we're at. And so, Brad, there's another point for the Super Seat. So that brings our total... Oh, it's tied up! Super Seat 5, Bloodworth 5, Brandon Jones 1, Kyle Bossman 3. <laughs> me, it's me against how many people? How many people are in that seat? Six? Yeah, but like you're here every week. You know what I mean? If anything, you have a bigger advantage than poor Brad does. He's got to come yeah. in here. He's not used to making bets. You're used to you're getting the process. Andrea did so much research. She was up all night looking at analytics of Amazon.com and what kind of games sell, and it paid off big. Yeah, big time. Five points. So, Brad, what you have earned is the right to close out the show, but also to promote any video you choose on GameTrailers.com. Oh, okay. Cool. So I want to promote this Kingdom Hearts mystery that I've been working on for about two weeks now. Yeah. Everyone involved. We worked super hard on that. Poor Brandon. I, I want to bad. know what that means, like what kind of work you do on it. So like, I'm the guy getting all the footage. We're, me and Don sit down. We listen to the script and everything. And mm -hmm. We pick out. I have to go through the games, find specific shots. I have like five games. What's an example of a specific shot you had to get? Find this shot of Terra giving Riku a keyblade. Okay. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I got to think about... When I played them all, I actually started playing them again while I was doing this to be able to have footage of it. Mm -hmm. So I put a lot of work into this. So why don't you just go to YouTube and just steal someone else's uh, clip I of this? I want the best footage we can get possible. Oh, Highest okay. quality. All right. I care about the production of it, actually. <laughs> oh, I love to hear that. So wait, what is the actual video that's going up? So the video is about a char the main villain of this series right now called... Xehanort. So it's all about the different forms of Xehanort throughout time and everything like that. Yeah. It's a long one. <laughs> yeah, basically it's a size of about three reviews. Cool. 3,500 words. So does it go into how he's going through time to yes. recruit himself yes. from different times? Yes. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's GT Time. I'm Brad Ellis. You can find me here at Twitter. Oh, and we say it out loud now. Now we have to. We're thinking about oh. like the people who are like listening. Do you guys cars. all say your own name? Uh, yeah, we say our own names. We don't expect you to memorize okay. ours. So I'm Bradley Ellis eighty seven. I'm D Bloodworth two. Game trailers vo. I'm Kyle Bossman. Uh, Brandon, you know what I was thinking? Hmm. If we can get you verified, yeah. someone can just type in Brandon Jones in the search, and right. you'll come up probably near the top. You might be already one of the most followed Brandon Joneses, right? No, not even close. Oh, no. Uh, there's a Brandon Jones uh, who's a television actor. 
Oh, that destroys me. There's no. a <laughs> Canadian American Idol winner that I'm sure has way more followers than me. Oh, yeah. God. And there are okay. uh, several sports stars named Brandon Jones. Oh, man. But okay. in the gaming community, look out, Brandon Jones. Yes. Yeah. Legend. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what are you, Ian Hink? Uh, I'm at Ian Hink. Okay. All of it's you easy. with your cool last names. Yeah. Also, getting verified is close to impossible. It's just it's is random. It? It's like they getting into it's it. like getting into Fort Knox. Yeah, like you just, just like you have to be in an will. elevator with somebody, and they're like, "Oh, uh, I work for Twitter." And it's like, oh, "I want to be verified." And they're like, oh, "Okay, boop, there you go, you're verified." Yeah. Hmm. Like random, random people are verified. Like, yeah. like there are massive celebrities with hundreds of thousands of followers that aren't. I've seen and people yet, with fewer followers than me, and I don't have many that are verified. <laughs> yeah, I think they're the noisiest. Maybe. Yeah. I think yeah. they're just like I you gotta need bug to, them. I'm on TV. Verify me. I think they're that. They have agents. We don't have agents. My name is Werner Brandis. My voice is my password. Verify me. What is that? What was so cool? What's what that, that from? What's that what from? What was that? What's that from? I'm not even telling you because the show's over. I'm done. No. Say what it in the names? comments. What is it from? I'm not telling. Say it in the comments. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah, that's Let's it. See, we got that's that. a mystery we'll solve Murder next Brandis week. Murder Brandis for the win. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. We really preempted your entire closing, Oh, no, Brad. that's okay. I don't care about closing it out. No, you have to care. <laughs> this is your prize, man. This is what you've won. My prize was promoting that video to me. <laughs> <laughs> I liked how Brandon closed it out right there. Like, just no, hard cut. You gotta know, because you gotta say thank you. Thank you to oh, everybody yeah, okay. who, like, Thank listens. you for watching, everybody. And listening. Yeah, and listening, car. wherever you are. Thanks for the support, and have a nice day. Love. What's that? <laughs> <laughs>